ready to go again. So starting with me down on the mat, using the mat to help realign the spine, allowing the head to rest onto the mat, using prop, towel, a block, anything to bring the head up slightly if you need to do so. Relaxing the arms are down by the side, encouraging the shoulders to roll out to the front of the chest or to open up to relax. Doing the same thing with the legs, letting thighs and knees, shins and feet to flop out and relax. Unless you find that with the legs are straight, the back doesn't feel right, it feels a bit tender, it feels a bit sore, in which case do bend the knees, are taking the pull off the back, taking the pull off the hips. Once that you find your place, or once that you feel that the body is a little bit more settled, then notice where the breath is. If I feel that the breath is coming from the top of the chest, so I can feel the panic breath where the collarbones, the neck, and the front of the chest the muscles are stiffening up to create that breath, see if I can allow the breath and the body to calm down, encouraging a nice, deep, relaxed belly breath. Feeling the belly expanding with the inhale and relaxing with the exhale. Softening the throat, relaxing the collarbone, encouraging the diaphragm to move inside of the ribcage. So it's not your intercostal muscles, it's not your neck muscles, it's not your chest muscle creating that breath. Also noticing how the body feels or where the body is. Am I straight? Am I wonky? Is there more pressure on my right or my left shoulder? Is my right arm more rotated than my left? Is it further out than my left? What about the legs? I'm not changing anything, just noticing where you are at this moment. And then when you're ready, to move, you feel a little bit more settled, a little bit more relaxed, and then focusing on the arms. So raising both arms up and towards the ceiling, locking the arms straight in front of you. With the right arm, I'm going to reach to the back of the room. With the left arm, I'm going to pull down by the side of the body. Think of the arms as staying locked, as staying strong. The one coming down the side, reaching down and towards the feet. The one going behind or reaching to the wall behind. Turning the head slightly, see if you can look at where the hand is and look at how the arm is holding. Is it still straight or is it bending? So is my elbow sagging? Is my shoulder relaxing? See if I can keep the elbow straight, the back of the arm, your tricep actively pulling to lengthen and extend the arms. Now I want you to exaggerate that reach and see if you can. Keep looking at the hand, trying to reach the arm so far that your shoulder comes up to your chin. So lengthening a little bit more around the back of the shoulder, down the side of the rib cage. Five, four, three, two, one. And easing back. Returning the arms back up and towards the ceiling. Adjusting the shoulders if you need to, swapping the arms around. With the left, I'm going to reach to the back of the room. With the right, I'm going to come down by the side. Turning the head to see if you can look at the left hand, making sure that the elbow is still locked, the arm is nice and long, nice and strong. And then once that you're happy that the arm is straight, then I'm going to start reaching it back. Keep looking at the hand to see if you can pull the arm so far that you can feel your shoulder touching your chin. Five. Four, three, two, one, and easing back. Returning the arms are back by the side, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. I'm going to see if I can go a little bit deeper into the shoulder joint. So raising the arms up to the front, clasping the hands together, interlocking the fingers, turning the palms to face up and towards the ceiling. And then just a gently, I'm going to start pushing the hands up and towards the ceiling, see if I can lock the elbow, see if I can lock the arm nice and straight, then easing back, and then I'm going to try again. Any pressure through the wrist, any discomfort through the wrist, and then I'm going to start for pushing. I'm going to go just as far 
as the wrist, as the forearm, as the arm will allow me to go. So making sure that there is no pain into the wrist joint, I'm not forcing anything. I'm going to try one more time, pushing the hands up in towards the ceiling, locking the elbows as straight as you can. Now, if the arms are straight, aim to keep them straight. If they're slightly bent, aim to keep them slightly bent and so on. So making sure that as the arms are start moving, you don't bend them further. So I'm going to try and lock them tight and then reaching both arms behind, just as far back as I feel that I can still keep the arms straight. My elbows are not bending, the arms are not suddenly sagging and flopping. Making sure that you're not lifting from the chest so it's not my back arching. The ribcage is staying down nice and quiet, nice and relaxed. And then the head is still able to move between the, the arms, making sure that the neck doesn't feel as if it's stiffening or tightening up. Three. Two. One. And easing back. Turning the palms to facing, releasing the fingers, relaxing the hands, giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. As a little bit more connection through the shoulder joint, I'm going to try and work into the hip. Bending the right knee, bringing the right foot up. I'm going to tuck the right foot on top of that left knee, left thigh. With the right hand, I'm going to reach for the inside of the knee. With the left hand, I'm going to hold on to the foot, support to the foot if you need to, or just relax in the arm down by the side. And then I'm just going to gently start pushing the knee away from the body. Think of externally rotating the leg. So I want the leg to turn out to the right and open to the right. The tendency if the hip is tight is to turn the all of the pelvis. So, so it looks as if the leg is going a long way out, but I've just twisted my hips. So see if you can be aware of the hips of the bone staying nice and still. It's just the leg moving into the hip socket. This is trying to loosen up through the hip. If you find that the, the knee joint is under quite a lot of pressure, so it feels quite uncomfortable, quite painful, then focus on the foot. If I lock the foot, if I dorsiflex, if I flex at the foot to pull in the toes up and towards me, and then lock the foot to stiffer, when I'm pushing away, in turn, that will tend to give the knee a little bit more support instead of opening the side of the knee and creating that um, hard, heavy pressure on it. Once that I feel that the hip is a little bit looser, then I'm going to push that right knee as far away as it goes and then aiming for the knee to stay away from me, I'm just going to let go with the hands. Lifting that left foot off the ground, I'm going to curl that left leg up and towards the chest, reaching the hands around the back of the thigh or around the front of the left knee. And then I'm going to gently ease that left leg closer to me until I feel that the stretch on the right side is becoming uncomfortable. So I don't want anything to be pain anything to be painful, just a little bit of discomfort. I can feel it pull into the hip or side of the leg, but there is no pain into the hip nor into the knee. Five. Four. And crossing the leg, giving the leg a little walk, releasing the foot, releasing the hip and the knee. I'm going to do the same thing with the left side. So tucking the left foot on top of the right thigh, same as you did on the other side. With the left hand, I'm going to reach for the inside of the leg. And then I'm just going to gently try to push the leg away. So try and encourage some movement into the hip. Aware of the pelvis, making sure that the pelvis is not twisting off to the side, so I'm not taking the all of the hips with me. Just the leg into the hip socket. Same as on the other side, keeping the foot locked. If I feel that, that gives a better support to the knee. Three. Two. And then last one, I'm going to keep the knee out there. I'm releasing with the hands, lifting that right foot off the ground and then curling that leg up into a jeep. Hooking the hands behind the thigh, around the knee, 
same as you did on the other side and then gently easing that leg towards you noticing how much easier or harder it is to work on this hip work on this side just listening to that left hip or to that left leg making sure that i'm not pulling so hard that i'm causing pain in the hip joint five four Two, one, and ease and back. Releasing the foot and crossing the legs, or giving the legs a little walk again, allowing the hip, the foot, the knee to release or to relax. So there's a little bit more movement into the hip, the joint. I'm going to start opening up the movement slightly. Taking the arms out to the side, turning the palms to face up and towards the ceiling. Think of yourself like a big capital T, extending the legs away. I'm going to lift the left foot off the ground and then I'm going to aim for that left foot to touch my right hand. And the only thing is making sure that my shoulders stay on the ground, especially my left shoulder. Then I'm going to ease that leg back. And then with the right leg, I'm going to lift up and then crossing over to the left. I want my right shoulder to stay on the ground, then easing back and then onto the other side. So that's the general direction. So I want to the opposite foot to the hand, the opposite foot to the hand of the other way. I might be able to get to the hand. I might not be able to get there. It doesn't matter, just making sure that I'm not throwing the leg across or just letting it flop from side to side. So see if I can actively try, actively try to pull it up and towards me and then across at the same time. Four. Three. Two. Last one, and releasing back, releasing the hips and releasing the legs. This is a little bit more movement into the hips too. I'm going to start putting a little bit more weight over the legs, rolling over onto your side and in your own time, and pushing yourself up into sitting, setting up into your dandasana, setting up into your staff pose. The legs are extended in front of you, finding the seat bones are climbing your way on top of the seat bones. Legs are straight and the back is straight. If I know that I can't do that, my hamstrings are too tight, too short. So if I straighten up my legs, that pulls on my back. If I straighten up my back, I have to bend the knees. Then I'm going to compromise. I'm just going to grab a hold of the block, a towel, anything you've got. And then just, just pop it under the hips. Just giving yourself the little extra rise. Once well, so you're happy that you've got that 90 degree angle or you're as close to that 90 degree angle between your thigh and the body, and then actively pulling with the legs and flexing the feet to pull in the toes up and towards you, encouraging a nice strong pull that from the front of the shins go over the knees into the front of the thighs. The hands come down by the side of the body. I was encouraging a lift through the back, Think of a lift starting from the bottom of the spine, going all the way up to the top. And then maintaining that lift. If you're sitting on the floor, so if you can aim to pull the strong with the legs to the point of feeling the heels of your feet are curling away from the ground. If you're sitting on the block, you don't want to do that as the knee will, will tend to bend backwards. So too much pressure on the knee. Three. Two. One, and ease and back. Relaxing the legs and releasing the hips. There's a little bit more activation. I'm going to start to go in a little bit deeper. So this time I'm going to bend the knees. So if you're sitting on the block, unless your hamstrings are very tight, I want to put the block to the side. Um, if the hamstrings are really tight, then stay on the block. I'm going to find the seat bones, and then what I want is for my hip joint to close. So I'm going to lift myself right up onto the seat bones and then coming forward from the hips, I want to close my hip joint. So I want to go into full flexion. 
So the belly is now pressing onto the thighs. The rib cage is almost like a climbing up on top of the knees. Maintaining that fold, now I'm going to start finding the traction into the hamstrings. Using the hands, grabbing hold of the feet. If I can get to the feet, holding onto the shins. If I feel that the feet are a bit too far, I'm either going to walk the feet forward or the hips back. So either way, what I want is for the knee joint to start extending. But see if you can be aware of where the stretch is. So I want to create a traction into the hamstrings, into the back of the leg, back of the knee, back of the calf. If I let my belly pull away from the thighs, that's taking the stretch up into the upper back. That's what's, where it's pulling the most. I don't want to stretch the back, I want to stretch the legs. So see if you can encourage the back to stay long, to stay flat. I want to try and lengthen myself for forward as if I was trying to put my nose in between my big toes. So imagine somebody sitting behind you with their hands on your hips and just gently pushing you forward over the legs. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Looking forward, looking up, easing the tension of the legs, of the feet, releasing all the way back, giving the legs a little shake. This is a little bit more movement into the back of the leg too. I'm going to start working through the inner thigh more. Bending the knees and walking both feet up and towards you, soles of the feet up. Uh, together setting up into your cobbler the same as you did for your dandasana if my hips are tight then the tendency as I sit here is to kind of like a roll backwards it feels really uncomfortable I'm really tight I'm just going to use the block again under the hips give myself the little raise underneath the hips so that I can sit straighter I can sit taller and then holding on to the feet or holding on to the shins, whichever it's easier to get to. I'm going to try and bring the feet as close to the hips as possible, just making sure that it's not causing pain into the knee. Rocking your hips forward, finding the seat bones, or sitting yourself nice and tall over the seat bones. And then with the fleshy bit of the forearm, I'm going to try and find my inner thigh, and then I'm going to just gently press it down onto the legs. Making sure that at no point there is a catching, as in painful catching, into the side of the hip. If there is a pain, I'm not going to press it down. So just allowing the legs to settle without any pressure coming from the arms. So see if I can encourage the legs to open a little bit wider. Noticing if one knee is maybe going a little bit further than the other. So I feel myself leaning slightly to one side. See if you can try and create a nice even drop on both. Three. Two. One. And easing back. Giving the legs a little shake, relaxing through the legs, relaxing into the hips. And then I'm going to try and work in isolation. So... Keeping the left knee bent, I'm going to extend the right leg away. Staying seated on the block if that works for you. Coming down if you find that's more comfortable sitting on the floor. The sole of the foot is going to go against the inside of the right leg. Bringing the foot as close to the hips as possible. Again, making sure that you're not causing pain into the knee. I'm going to, same as I did lying down, I'm just going to try and encourage that external rotation. So my knee might be very high if the hip is tight just to just apply a gentle pressure see if i can try and ease that leg down gradually see how far i can get it down if i can get it all the way down so the shin is flat against the mat then that's a good position for the leg to be in if i find that it's quite stiff so i can't get it past a certain point then I might want to support that leg. So I'm just going to grab hold of my towel or my block and then just slip it underneath so I can push against the block instead so the leg is not just a flapping about. Then pressing the shin down into the ground, pressing the left leg down, I'm going to turn into the right leg, trying to climb myself up onto the seat bend. 
actively pulling through the right leg. I'm going to reach the hands to the front and then I'm just going to ease my way forward over that right leg. Holding on to the sheen, holding on to the foot if you can get to the foot. The same as before. See if you can be aware of the flexion coming from the hip. So I'm not just surrounding and head diving my way down. I'm trying to hinge my way forward and then pull my way forward over that leg. So think of the belly again moving towards the right thigh, the ribcage trying to come forward towards the knee and then with the head trying to reach forward towards the foot or towards the toes. With the left leg I'm still pressing down, just noticing where you feel the pull, the stretch the most. So some of you will feel it in the hamstring at the back of the leg, some of you will be much stronger into that left hip. Wherever you feel that the resistance, the restriction is the strongest, See if you can try and focus the breath. Imagine to be breathing into the area to help it relax it. Three. Two. One. Looking forward, looking up, releasing that leg, releasing the left leg, giving the toes a little bit of a wriggle, making sure that the foot doesn't feel too squashed. And then I'm going to repeat the same on the other side. Just extending the left leg away. I'm going to turn the right foot in, sole of the foot against the inside of the leg. I'm going to pull the right leg nice and close to me. And then same as on the other side, I'm just going to test. As one hip is different from the other, this side might drop. When the other side didn't, this might not drop. In which case, I'm just going to pop the block underneath. So giving the leg a little bit of a support. Then trying to actively pull through the left leg. I'm going to lift my way up over the sequence and then coming forward over that left leg. See if I can encourage the stretch to open up the back of the back of the left leg. And then at the same time encouraging some stretching to the right hip. So noticing if the stretch feels different from the other side. On one side I might have felt it more into the back of the leg, on the other side I might be feeling it more into the hip. Same as before, use the breath to see if you can use your exhale to help you release some of that tension. Three. Two. Looking forward, looking up, releasing the leg, releasing the foot, releasing the right leg, giving the toes a little wriggle, the foot a little bit of a roll. So it's a little bit more movement into the hips. I'm going to see if I can start getting a little bit more movement into the back too. So bending the knees, walking the feet up into a you, sitting cross-legged. Whichever way around us, we're going to be swapping. So one leg in front of the other. Same as you did before. Use the block underneath the hips, especially if the back feels as if it's falling backwards. I feel myself squashed at the front. I want to be as lifted as possible at the front. So finding the seat bones, maintaining yourself nice and lifted over the seat bones. With the right hand, I'm going to reach across to the left knee. With the left hand, I'm going to reach behind the back. Imagine to be pressing the arm against the back of the sponge so see if I can encourage a little bit more lift and then once that I've got that lift to turn in to follow that left shoulder around gradually twisting your way over to the left five four Two, one, and ease and back. Releasing the twist, releasing the shoulders. I'm going to try the same thing to the other side. So left hand to the right knee, right hand behind the hips, encouraging that nice that lift through the back, or pushing the arm against the back of the spine, and then turning to follow the right shoulder around. Twisting around to the right side. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And ease. 
releasing back, releasing the twist, the releasing the shoulders. I'm going to switch the legs around. So whichever one is at the front, I'm going to bring it at the back. Finding the seat bones again. See if I can try and lift myself nice and tall on top of the seat bones. Once that you're happy that you've got that lift, the same as before. Right hand to the left knee, left hand behind the hips. Encouraging yourself to lift up as high as you can and then twist and to follow the left shoulder around. Five. Four. twist, reversing, left hand to the right knee, right hand behind the back, encouraging that lift through the back and then twisting your way around, following that right shoulder, five, four, Two, one, and releasing back, releasing the shoulders, releasing the back. It's a little bit more movement into the back too. I'm going to try and do a little bit more loading through the shoulders and the arms. So setting up into a high plank, taking the legs around to the side, coming up and around until you're up on all fours. I'm going to lock the arms nice and straight below the shoulders, spreading the fingers, pushing the palms into the ground. If the wrist doesn't allow me to, so even earlier on the warm up, I couldn't really flex the wrist, then I'm going to try and come up onto an open fist. Alternatively, alternatively you can roll at the mat and then build in a little support. I can just rest the hand onto the edge of the mat. So taking some of the pressure of that 90 degree angle at the wrist joint. I'm going to keep the shoulders directly on top of the hands and then I'm going to start the shuffling, just the knees away first. So what I want is to picture a straight line that goes from your knees or through your hips or through the shoulders, through the head. Just making sure that you're not letting the shoulders sag and then you're not letting the hips sag so the back is not arching through. See if I can hold myself up strong. If that still feels quite easy, quite comfortable, then I'm going to tuck the toes under and then pulling up through the front of the thighs, I'm going to lock the knees. So think of that line going from the head all the way to the feet. Five. Four. Three. Two. One dropping back onto the knees if you need to. I'm going to bend the elbows and then lowering the chest down and towards the ground to see if you can think of the chest being the last, the first thing to touch the floor, the hips and the belly, the last. I'm going to let the arms and let the shoulders have a little rest and relax, turning the head to look over the right shoulder, the left here is on the mat. So it's a little bit more connection through the arms at the top. I'm going to try and work in reverse. So grabbing hold of a towel, a block of anything, I'm going to pop the block underneath the rib cage. So it's making sure that it's not squashing the chest, it's under under the rib cage. It's giving me a little support to here. The legs are extended behind, I'm going to tuck the toes under and then placing the hands directly underneath the shoulders or as close to that as the shoulders can get. I'm going to lock the legs and pull in through the front of the thigh, same as you did on your high plank, trying to actively pull through the front of the legs. And then pushing down through the palm of the hands, locking through the shoulders, I'm going to lift the, the chest and the head off the ground. So the block in the middle is helping me to support the upper body. At the, at the moment, there is no weight to really going through the arms. Three, two, one, and releasing back. 
sliding the block out of the way, allowing the body a little rest, and turning the head to look over that left shoulder, the right here is on the mat. Now, if that felt comfortable enough, then this time I'm going to make the arms work a little bit harder. So instead of having the block under the rib cage, I'm going to pop the block under the hips. And then I'm going to reset that position, same as before. I'm going to tuck the toes under, gripping with the feet, resting the hands, setting the hands underneath the shoulders, holding them there, tucking the elbows in, reach them long behind. I'm going to lock through the thighs, and then pulling back through the forearms, through the arms, I'm going to lift the chest off the ground. So the hips are supported by the block, the belly, the chest, the head, the knees, the thighs are off the floor. So the only thing that touching the floor is your hands and your feet. Three. Two. One. And ease and your way back down again unloading the wrist pushing the block out of the way into one side little rest for the shoulders a little rest for the arms and then i'm going to try one more time if you're happy with the block keep the block pop it back under the hips or under the rib cage where it feels more comfortable if i feel that i can do a little bit more this time then i'm going to try not to use the block so i'm just going to rely on the strength of my arms and my legs so setting the hands directly underneath the shoulders, tucking the toes under, gripping down with the feet. I'm going to lock the legs nice and straight, lifting the hips, lifting the belly, lifting the chest, lifting the head off the ground, hovering my way off the mat. Five. Four. Three. Two. and releasing all the way back down and Unlo unloading the wrist relaxing the shoulders releasing the arms it's a little bit more connection into the arms it's a little bit more connection into the legs i'm going to change the load to the east arm pushing up onto hands and knees i'm going to shuffle to the front of the mat setting the hands and shoulder width spreading the fingers pushing the palms into the ground locking the arms feet about to hips width apart a little bit wider if that feels more comfortable tucking the toes under i'm going to lift the knees up or keep the knees bent just locking the arms are nice and straight i think of opening up the front of the armpits letting the head drop down between the arms and then with the seat bones to see if you can reach back and lift up at the same time almost as if i was trying to sit my bum up on the ceiling maintaining that reach through the back See if you can straighten up your upper and straighten up your lower back. And then seat bones ascend up and towards the ceiling with the heels of the feet. I'm going to start lengthening my way down and towards the ground. Just to see if you can be aware of the back keeping its shape as the legs are going straight. So if I straighten up my legs and my back is suddenly rounding and arching, my hamstrings are too tight to be going for a straight leg. So if instead you can hold the nice straight back and then extending the legs are just as far as I can maintain my back straight. If the heels of the feet can easily go down on the floor, then your feet are too close to the hands. Shuffle back a little bit more and then see if you can get a deeper stretch through the calves. So, one. And release and down. Dropping the knees and pushing back into child. The big toes come together. Knees open up a little bit wider. Allowing the body to relax and forward into that space. And the arms and the shoulders, the wrists are to have a little rest. I'm going to lift up again. These stamps, see if I can get a little bit more involvement into the back. So I've got a nice, a long, extended position. These stamps to that extended position, I'm going to have the twist, the rotation. So same as I did on the seated poses. So I'm going to reset the hands the same as before, tucking the toes under, lifting the knees up, and then I'm going to straighten up the back. So see if I can find that straight line again. 
then if you're feeling safe enough to do so, I want you to let go with that right arm and then with the right arm to see if you can aim to grab hold of the heel of that left foot from the outside. So I'm going to reach that arm through, feel that arm through, I'm going to rotate my way through trying to get to the foot. Three. Two. And ease and back. Pushing back into child, loading the wrist, relaxing the shoulders, and releasing the back. I'm going to try exactly the same thing going to the other side. So think of your back going nice and straight and nice and long first. As if my back is round and the foot looks a long way away from me. So I've got a long way to get there. If the back is straight, I'm taking myself much closer to the feet. All of a sudden, it looks a lot more achievable. So see if you can focus on the back more. So I'm going to lengthen through the back, reach my way through, extend my way out, letting go with the left hand if you're feeling safer going there. See if you can reach and grab hold of that right foot. Three. Two, one, and ease and back, pushing back into child, unloading the wrist, releasing the shoulders, there's a little bit more movement into the back, more connection through the hands or through the feet, I'm going to try and do some standing. So when you're ready, uncurling all the way back and in your own time, pushing yourself up into standing and coming up to the front of the mat i'm going to keep the right foot nice and still stepping back on the left turning the left foot out slightly and just making sure that you're able to keep your hips facing the front so give yourself space between the feet if you feel a bit wobbly see if you can try and ground yourself pressing the heel of the left foot down into the ground Think of the arch of the foot as the wind lifted, so the foot is not collapsing, the leg is not twisting. I'm going to bend the right knee and then I'm going to lunge my way down. Adjusting the position of the right foot to make sure that from where I'm standing, if I look down, I should just about be able to see my toes. So my foot is not too far back, all the pressure is not dropping into that knee. Making sure that the hips are still facing forward as the tendency is to overstep and then the hips are start turning to the side of the room. Once that you're happy that the legs are set and then setting the arms. Two strong straight lines running in front of you, locking them nice and straight ahead of you. Feel that left side of the bum, give it a nice good squeeze to help you support to the lower back and making sure that you're not arching and dumping everything into it. Dropping the shoulders as raising the arms up. Same as you did on your mat. Making sure that the arms are coming up, the head is free to move between them. I'm not shrugging my shoulders up to the head. I'm not bringing my shoulders up to my ears as to see if I can keep the neck nice and free, nice and loose. And then same as you practice lying down, I'm going to try and interlock the hands. Tipping the head back, locking the palm of the hands together, I'm going to interlock just the last three fingers, reach the index across the thumbs. Now squeezing the elbows in, reaching the fingertips up, imagine a band tightening around the back of the shoulder like a sling trying to lift you up and then hang you up. See if I can get a little bit more of a lift through the top of the chest into the back with the hips I'm still trying to sink my way down and towards the mat three two one and releasing back releasing the hands releasing the legs stepping the feet all the way back in releasing through the hips releasing through the thighs I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other side. So setting up your warrior on the other side. Left foot is still, the right steps back. Turning the foot out slightly, the hips are square to the front. Dragging the heel of the foot down, the arch is lifted on the inside. 
bending that left knee and then sinking your weight down into that lunge. The hips are still facing straight forward, just straight ahead. I can feel that opening through the right hip, the stretch into the back of the calf. Two long straight lines are running ahead of you. Drop the shoulders, squeeze in with the right bum cheek as hard as you can, raising the arms up and towards the ceiling, encouraging that lift into the shoulders, the lift into the chest, keeping the head back if you're feeling balanced enough to do so. Pressing the palm of the hands together, interlocking the last of three fingers, reach the index across the thumbs. Squeezing the elbows in, reaching the fingertips up to touch the ceiling. Feel that band, that sling tightening around the back of the shoulder, encouraging you to lift them more. The back leg is still locked solid, but the back of the bum still squeezing and tightening. The hips are still trying to sink down. The ribcage is still going up. Three. Two, one, and releasing back. Releasing the arms, are stepping the legs all the way back in, giving the legs a little walk. This is a little bit more opening at the front. I'm going to try and take the opening through the inner thigh, working into the hip a little bit more. So taking a nice big step out to the side. I'm going to turn the right foot out completely. The left foot comes in slightly. The left leg are completely locked against the mat, the knee is locked, the hip is holding up, so making sure that the hip is not rolling and dropping forward. Maintaining that lift into that left hip, I'm going to start bending the right knee and then lunging my way down. Sending the knee in the same direction as the middle toe is pointing, so making sure that the leg is not twisting and coming across this way. I'm going to adjust the distance between the feet if I feel that I've gone a bit too wide or too narrow. And then think of maximum distance between the top of your left hip and the inside of the right knee. So I don't want those two to move closer together. I want those two to move as far away from each other as possible. The lower back is softer, the tailbone is dropping straight down and towards the ground, setting the arms this time. Reaching the arms out to the side, checking that they're level with the shoulders, pressing the shoulders down and away from the head, and then turning to look at the right arm. Imagine two hands on top of your shoulders, pressing your shoulders down, encourage them to drop. And then two hands around your hips, are pulling your hips down, encouraging your lunge to go deeper. So making sure that you're staying centered, so you're not moving right, you're not moving left. You're just a drop in straight down the middle. Three, two, one, and ease and back. Straightening up the legs is bringing the arms down, shuffling the legs all the way back in, releasing the legs, relaxing the hips. I'm going to open up my warrior two on the other side. So stepping out nice and wide, turning that left foot out completely, the right foot comes in slightly. The right leg nice and grounded, the knees locked with the side of the hip, the back of the bum, I'm trying to hold the hip up. Bending that left knee, I'm going to lunge my way down the other side, checking that the knee is still in line with the middle, and second toe is not twisting, it's not coming across. Adjusting the distance between the feet if you need to. And then same as on the other side, think of maximum distance between the top of the right hip and the left knee. So I don't want them to drift together, I want them to pull apart. Tailbone dropped, setting the arms. The two strong straight lines running by the side, check that they're level with the shoulders, dropping the shoulders down. And then turning to look over that left shoulder, over the left arm. See if I can think of the shoulders dropping, but not the arms. See if I can let the hips sink a little bit deeper into that lunge. Three. Two. One. And ease and back. Releasing the arms and shuffling the legs all the way back in. Releasing the legs, releasing the hips. This is a little bit more opening through the inside of the leg too. I'm going to try and see if I can get a little bit more. We're going into the back of the leg. 
turning to face the shorter side of the mat. I'm going to come forward into Uttanasana, I'm going to come forward into narrow fold. Same as we practice the sitting down, think of a hip flexion. So I'm going to bend the knees and then flexing from the hips, I want to push the belly forward into the thighs, as if you can think of the back of staying nice and straight behind. I want the ribcage to try and slide down and towards the knees, and then with the head I'm going to try and reach down and towards the feet. Reaching the hands to the back of the legs, as close to the feet as you can, squeezing the elbows together at the back, so you can give yourself a nice tight hug. And then exactly the same as you did in your seated position, allowing the head to relax as if I can. Climb my seatbelts up and towards the ceiling, reaching my head down and towards the feet. If the belly starts pulling away from the thighs, then I'm taking the stretch into the back. What I want is keep it into the legs, so it doesn't matter if the legs are bent, as far as I feel that the stretch is still at the back of the legs are there. Five, four, three, two, one. Looking forward, looking up, bending the knees as much as you need, hands on the hips, lifting all the way back up to the top. Just giving the legs a little walk, a little shake. As there's a little bit more movement all the way around, I'm going to try and finish not finish off a plane a bit with the balance. So stepping the feet nice and close together. Pulling up through the front of the thighs and then think of grounding the legs. Deciding which leg you're going to be standing on first. I'm going to bend the other knee. Roll up onto the ball of the foot and then when I'm ready to do so, I'll be lifting the foot off the ground. Just trying to bring the leg progressively up higher. See if you can again think of a hip flexion. So it's the hip flexion to allow the leg to come up. It's not my pelvis attacking under. I'm not leaning backwards to get the leg to lift. I'm just trying to lift the leg. Five. Four. Two, one, and releasing back, but releasing the standing leg. I'm going to try the same thing with the other side. Just stepping the feet in nice and close. I'm going to bend the other knee, rolling up onto the ball of the foot, up onto the big toe. When I'm ready, if I'm ready to do so, I'll be picking my foot off the ground. And then progressively trying to get that leg up higher, see if I can allow the knee to lift, the hip to close a little bit more, the back is still nice and upright, the shoulders are still loose, are still relaxed. Five, four, three, two. releasing back, relaxing the legs and releasing the hips. It's a little bit more connection into the right, into the left leg. When you're ready, coming up to the front of the mat, easing your way forward into your fold, and bending the knees that you can forward from the hips, the belly down onto the thigh, ribcage down onto the hips. Placing the hands down by the side of the feet, to spreading the fingers, pushing the palms into the ground, and stepping back with one, Stepping back with the other leg, locking the arms are nice and straight, pushing back into your dog. The hips are warm, the back is warm, and see if I can try and create that straight line all the way up into the hips. And then working through the legs to see if I can try and get a little bit more stretch through the back of the calf, playing with one leg at a time, pressing down, pressing down into the heel of one foot, releasing, pressing down onto the other side. See if I can try and use enough some of that tension. Three, two, one. Bending the knees, dropping the knees all the way back. Big toes stand 
come together. And pushing back into child, allow the belly and the ribcage to drop down be between the legs, into the space between the inner thighs and the arms to come down by the side, palms to turn up and towards the ceiling. Let the shoulders flop, let the shoulders relax, let the shoulders drop. Unfurling all the way back. Taking the legs around to the side, bring them to the front, coming down into sitting, loading yourself all the way down until you're resting on the back, setting yourself into Shavasana. Same as you did at the beginning, keeping the knees bent or extending the legs away if that feels comfortable enough for your hips and back. Allowing the arms to come down the side of the body, turning the palms to face up and towards the ceiling. Let the shoulders roll, let the shoulders flop and drop. We're using a little pillow underneath the head if you need to do so. And then same as you did at the beginning, notice where the breath is. See if you can encourage it to drop down into the belly. Feeling the belly expanding with inhalation. Relaxing with the exhalation. If there is any tension left anywhere within the body, imagine to be able to breathe that tension away. to your Shavasana for as long as you need to stay there. In the meantime, Namaste to your Ahapossi also.